There's a Royal Danish F-16 that lives here at Edwards Air Force Base that's become part of our culture. Its tail number is 7800210, but we affectionately know it as 210. 210 has been our most reliable chase airplane. It's supported over 1,100 F-35 flight test missions. 210 has been there from the beginning. It chased early flights of F-35 AA-1, the prototypical F-35. It's chased envelope expansion missions and the most exciting flight test missions that the F-35 has ever accomplished. High angle of attack chase including out-of-control flight for the F-35, flutter missions to maximum Mach, loads missions to 9 Gs, diving flight test points to 700 knots or maximum KCAS. I'd like to salute the maintenance personnel who supported 210 in this eight-year epic journey through F-35 flight test. Lars Jetzler, Alan Bollert, and Niels Peterson. Many thanks to them. I say to them, pack. I'd also like to say farewell to a colleague, a fellow test pilot, and a friend of mine, and that's Pell Nielsen. He flew 210 on most of those flight test support missions. He was our best chase. He always knew where we were and where we were in the flight test cards. He was able to keep track of altitude, direction of turn, airspace orientation, the frequency we were supposed to be on. Nobody did it as good as Pell. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Casper Nielsen. My call sign is Pell. I arrived out here at Edwards in 2008, where flight test was at its very beginning. Uh, the squadron didn't even have any aircraft yet, so essentially ET-210 was the first aircraft that became attached to the squadron. Since then, I've seen the squadron grow from just a few people till today, where we are more than a total of 1,000 people and 14 test pilots. We've also gone from having uh, no test aircraft till today where we operate nine test aircraft on a daily basis. The F-35 is going to be a highly capable fighter aircraft. Uh, it's pretty much set to replace uh, most of the aircraft we know today. And it's also been chosen to replace the aging fleet of uh, Danish F-16s which we've been operating since the early 80s. The F-35 comes in, in three variants, as we know, the A, B and C model, and they're each made to fit the different branches of the military. Denmark has opted to buy the uh, F-35A, which is often considered the Air Force version. The F-35 is a fifth generation fighter, which means it incorporates some of the newest technologies in aviation. And that includes how the aircraft is controlled and the way the aircraft are maintained. And the engine contains a lot of new technology. Flight tests of a new aircraft often take the aircraft to the limits and often even beyond. And that's of course also true for the F-35 program. A typical test mission often involves more than 50 people. It also requires a lot of assets. First of all, you need a test aircraft. Uh, you'll often also need a chase aircraft. And it's all controlled from a control room where a lot of the data is streamed down real time. Sometimes our test mission goes as long as three to four hours. So on these missions, we will often also have support from air refueling aircraft. Typically start out in the morning with pre-simulation, where we try to simulate everything we're going out to do later. And then we have briefing, we have to step to the aircraft, then the actual flight. And after we land again, we have debriefing, where we analyze what we saw. So from end to end, a typical test mission often lasts as long as eight to 10 hours. A test mission is very complex, and there's so much that can go wrong. In addition, all the people involved have to perform flawlessly for everything to be a success.
high angle of attack and out of control testing is probably some of the most high risk testing you can imagine. And being a chase aircraft on a mission like that is extremely challenging. High angle of attack takes us past the stall point of the airplane. And this airplane, once you get past that stall angle of attack, you can still move the nose around, up and down and side to side, and maneuver to get where you want to be in relation to your opponent. So it'll be a, a maneuver enhancing capability that the F-35 has that perhaps gives it the advantage to any adversary it might encounter. Not only that, it gives high confidence to the pilot flying the F-35 that he can do about whatever he wants to with the airplane, take it to the edge of its envelope, and not be afraid of departing controlled flight. Being on one of those missions was always very exciting because on every single mission you truly flew into the unknown. Testing of the F-35 showed that the aircraft handles extremely well at high angles of attack. Not only was it controllable, we were also able to regain control from every out control recovery testing we did. In addition, the engine performed excellent under all these very extreme conditions. On all high-risk test missions, uh, we therefore have what we refer to as a chase aircraft. A chase aircraft is essentially uh, an aircraft with another test pilot flying right next to the test aircraft. The role of the test pilot in the chase aircraft is kind of like to act like a co-pilot to the test pilot in the test aircraft. His role is to make sure that everything goes according to plan, continuously inspect the test aircraft from the outside and make sure no, nothing is leaking and everything looks okay. The Danish support aircraft has also performed other roles than just chase. In the very beginning of the flight test program, it often acted as target for the Catbird, the Catbird being a Boeing 737 that contains all the 35 sensors. It also acted as a target for testing the F-35 electro-optical system uh, using uh, the Sabre liner. Finally, the chase aircraft often also carries an aerial photographer. He sits in the back seat and records uh, all the test maneuvers performed. That could be an out-of-control recovery or it could be a weapon drop. Weapon away, weapon away. Where you need that footage for later analysis. We enjoy seeing 210 on the board and seeing our names in the back seat with Pell in the front. With his experience, we know that we're going to get what we're set out to do and we're going to come home with a good product. There's times where, you know, we can go to step to a jet and we never know what pilot we're going to get. It could be a veteran who has hours of experience chasing. It could be a young captain straight out of TPS who has minimal chase experience. The reliability of 210 and the reliability of Pell and the experience that he brings with that jet, for us, it's, it's a dream come true and it's going to be sad to see Pell and 210 uh, depart Edwards. One of the best examples of the support and the integrated team here at the ITF is Aircraft 210. But that F-16 has flown over 1,100 missions, 2,500 hours in the eight years that it's been here. It accompanied every single F-35A that was at Edwards from Fort Worth to get it here. It's been part of over 400 high-risk test missions and a part of most of the first that this program has seen, from the first missile shot to the first gunshot to the first out-of-control event in the F-35 history. And just a perfect example of how when that team comes together, it's working and how everyone is committed to getting this program done and done right. Edwards Air Force Base is a remarkable place. It holds a huge place in aviation history and also a lot of firsts was done out here. Best known is perhaps when Chuck Yeager wrote the sound barrier in 1947. Still today, Edwards Air Force Base breaks new ground within aviation on a daily basis. Having watched the entire F-35 flight test program from within, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that this aircraft is going to grow into one of the most capable fighter aircraft the world has ever seen. So in essence, everyday history is being written within the F-35 program, and it's been great to have been part of all that for the past eight years. 
F-35 initial flight test will soon come to an end and uh, within the next couple of years the F-35 will start to become a vital and important part of many air forces around the world and that includes Denmark.